Hi, BC family. Welcome to your midweek devotion. So on Sunday, Sarah spoke about persevering through your pain. And she talked about how pain can be a test of your faith. It's not the storm that's the test, but it's the way out of the storm where you can grow and stretch your faith. And so sometimes we're going through seasons or storms that are painful and difficult, right? And sometimes we want God to just deliver us instantly. But sometimes we sit there and we think, it's not happening. Why am I still going through this? Why am I still in pain? Why is this job still not here? Why is this person still doing this? Why is my family still like this, right? And we start to conjure up these questions about why. But sometimes God doesn't just get us out of something in a snap as much as we want that to happen. But he does get you through a storm for a purpose and a plan and a destiny. Sometimes the greater thing is getting someone through something rather than delivering someone from something. Think about kids or your own kids. I think about my kids. I have a hard time letting my kids suffer, right? No one says, oh, I want my kid to suffer. No one likes that. But if we deliver them from everything, then we miss that there are some things that they need to learn and they need to go through in order to learn that. And some lessons are hard to watch your children go through, but you have to let them in order to teach them and grow them and stretch them. Most of the time, these lessons, I didn't create them. I didn't cause my child to cheat on a test or to lie. I didn't tell my child which friends to be with that ended up being not nice friends and not good people, right? I didn't do that to her. But I'm also not going to go to those girls and say, hey, you be nice to my daughter and what you're doing is unkind. No, I'm not going to do that. But I am going to teach my daughter how to handle the situation. And I'm going to walk her through that season or that storm. And I'm going to teach her how to deal with the pain and the hurt and the emotion so that as life goes on, she will be able to overcome in the future. Sometimes you have to go through that season or that storm and learn certain lessons in order to have the victory later on in your life, right? And I feel like somehow this is how God deals with us. This world brings storms and problems and seasons that God didn't cause, but he will use those moments to teach, to stretch, and to grow. So, so that in the future, you can overcome and live in victory. And I think sometimes when you're walking through that season or walking through that time of hardship, you have to get to the root of who God is. What do you believe? Who do you believe God is? What is the nature of God? Uh, you see a lot of times many people go through things and they tend to say uh, that God is doing it to them, right? Well, God caused this and God brought this on. And I guess he's trying to teach me a lesson. But if you really look at the nature of God, it says in the Bible that God is light and in him there is no darkness. So God has no dark side. He doesn't have this evil side. In Psalms 119, it says God is good and does good. So sometimes we're in the midst of a storm and we're struggling. We have to untangle the fact that God is not hurting us, right? He didn't cause these things to happen. Just like I didn't cause my daughter, I didn't make her be friends with those horrible people to teach her a lesson, right? So it's imperative as you walk through your season in your storm to remember the nature of God and that God did not cause any of this. But you might not be having your instant deliverance because he's going to stretch you and grow you and teach you through something that you're going through, right? Um, the verse in the Bible, it says that um, God works all things out for our good. So God will take something that happened to us that's bad, that he didn't cause, but he'll work it out for our good. Um, the Israelites is a good example of someone who blamed God over and over about their situation, but he never caused what was happening. In fact, he was providing. He pulled them out of their storm in Egypt. He is doing the fire by night. He's the cloud by day. He's giving them manna every day, every day for food. But what they wanted was the instant miracle but he was trying to teach them and to grow them and to stretch them and to prepare them for what was to come. So God doesn't cause bad things, but he does work all bad things for our good. And it reminds me a little bit of when Jesus was sleeping on the boat with the disciples in the middle of that storm. They said, when they woke him up, they said, don't you even care about us, right? It felt like in the middle of that storm that had been dragging on that God didn't care. But in reality, God was there the whole time. He didn't cause the storm. And he never left them. He was there, growing them in their faith, stretching them in their faith, 
And after all was said and done, he said, oh, ye of little faith. He was trying to teach them and to grow them and to stretch them and to train them. A lot of times people equate pain as bad, but not all pain is bad. I was thinking about childbirth is painful, but it produces something beautiful. But you have to go through that pain to get to what you need, what you want, and what is meant for you. God doesn't cause pain, but he can use it to make you better, to grow you and to stretch you. But, and here's the key today, is you have to finish the process. So right now, I'm going through my own challenges and hardships, and one of them is I'm going through intensive occupational therapy. I had an accident that led to a surgery that led to a cast and when they removed the cast I was faced with a new storm. I thought that I would have range of motion, that it, the pain wouldn't be as bad, but it turns out I have zero range of motion. I can't move my wrist at all in any direction and the pain is insanely a hundred times worse than it was before. And so now I'm faced with this new storm and I was told that I had to do this intensive occupational therapy to to show progress in my situation. And the pain in these sessions is unreal. And I was talking to my OT the other day and I said, this is so painful. I said, and when I leave here, my hand hurts for days. And she said, pain is good. She goes, you want the pain because in the end, the pain is what will get you to recovery. And so she sat there assuring me that if I keep going, it would get better and that the pain was good and that the pain would bring healing. And it reminded me of a story that Christine Kane once said. She had snapped her ACL and had this horrific knee surgery and everything. And her doctor came to her and said, okay, now most people don't fully recover from your type of accident. This is what the doctor told her. He goes, it's not that they can't recover. In fact, due to her skin graft and stuff that she had, her hurt leg was actually stronger than her other leg, her, in, uh, her non injured leg. It was stronger but he went on to tell her he said when your accident happened the pain was quick he goes but your recovery is going to take a good six months at the very least and he said your recovery he said the pain in your recovery will far outweigh the pain of the injury so he said you can either recover quickly or slowly completely or partially it's completely up to you the degree in which you are willing to embrace the pain of recovery is the degree in which you will recover, right? And it had me thinking through all of my pain and from her story and people telling me, just keep pushing through, that in life we hit these seasons and hardships and storms and sometimes we decide to stop persevering because the pain is just too much. And we decide, you know what? I mean, I've had those thoughts run through my hand before where I'm like, you know, I can, I can deal, I can cope with this. I'd rather cope than continue to go and be tortured. <laughs> so, People decide to stop persevering with the pain that's too hard and they, they settle for where they are instead of achieving the victory of what they could have. And we decide to deal with the pain and make it livable instead of achieving everything that God has for us on the other side. And it made you, makes me think about Joshua. If he didn't persevere through the pain of suffering through that desert for all that time, he may have never seen the promised land. If Jesus didn't persevere through his pain, he would have never chosen to die on the cross. And when you view it that way, you see that sometimes our seasons and our hardships aren't even for us. It's not even our lesson, but it's about other people that we need, that need the lesson and the faith. But we have to persevere for our, through our storm in order to help them. Jesus's pain wasn't for him. It was for us, right? He had to persevere in order for us to gain our freedom in him. Imagine if he had opted out had said while well, he was crying the Garden of Gethsemane just too much and he just doesn't want to do it. Imagine all the people that would have affected had he not chosen to persevere through the pain to reach the promise, right? So you have to allow Jesus to teach you and stretch you and grow you because he has so much more for you. And sometimes we get stuck in that moment in that middle where we stop persevering and we end up like the Israelites who didn't ever see the promised land because they kept blaming God for where they were and they chose to settle instead of persevere through all the hardships in the season, right? So don't miss out on your promised land because you blame God for your suffering or because you decide it's too hard to press through. As Sarah said Sunday, you want to lean into him. He is faithful. And she referenced the song Waymaker and I'll end with some of the lyrics. It says, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Sometimes, like with Jesus on the boat with the disciples, they didn't feel like he was aware or caring or a part of it when he was. But he was waiting for them to persevere and to stretch and to grow and to 
learn through that moment, right? So in those lyrics, it says he never stops working. And the best part of the song is the reminder of who God is. Jesus didn't cause that storm. The Bible didn't say he created the storm and then sat there and waited it out. It's not what happened, right? It says in the lyrics, God is a way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. So remember that God is good and God loves you and he would never hurt you, but he will teach you. So this week, have a teachable heart. Have a great week. Bye.